was that God warning them and then sort of showing, or was that someone saying that and they called it into being by prophesying it? And did did some did that open the door for it happening rather than what well, God wanted that to happen? I mean, God didn't want someone to be shot at or whatever, and, you know, in in the slightest. Now, it's it is a difficult scenario. Well, now there's a word that there's divine. There's just divine protection on him. Yeah, because he's God's man. Well. I don't know. That's what. That's what. Yeah. I mean, I personally don't believe he's God's man. Any any other pol politicians are God's man. I believe God uses people uh, and can bring good out of the situations that people bring about and are in. Uh, you would. I mean, you can have people on the divide of politics having an opinion over this from the wildly, yeah, he's God's man and God is protecting him and he's going to have a landslide win. You know in that and then you have people on the other thing well live by the sword die by the sword you know you promote violence you're gonna suffer from violence now both of them have a sowing and reaping type of scenario now i'm not political in this in this game um but i don't believe god is partisan and i don't believe god supports any party per se but god will bring good out of what we decide and I don't believe God decides who's going to be president and who isn't. I, I just don't think that that's what God does. Otherwise, he'd force people to uh, be doing something to align with what he wants. Now, God doesn't force anyone to do anything. Now, is there a foreknowledge of what we choose? Maybe. And can good God bring good out of the foreknowledge of what we choose? Because he brings good out of all our choices. And his desire is to is to bring good. Um, so you've, you've got different ways of looking at the prophetic. Um, and obviously, the last time you had this election cycle, you had all of these wild prophecies about so many different things and none of them came to pass. Um, and those who then admitted that they obviously got it wrong were then vilified for admitting they got it wrong because those people didn't admit hey, we got it wrong. You know, and now they'll all be probably coming out saying, Ah, uh, yeah, but the second term is now. We got it. We 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 were only four years out. You know that type of thing. Now, personally, I just don't believe any of that. And I believe God' desire is that we would transition out of our reliance on any human system into uh, the kingdom of God being established on earth as it is in heaven. That is a kingdom of love. That is a kingdom which operates completely differently from the systems that we have developed, which have come out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that includes all political systems. There would have been no politics if we were following God's kingdom. There's no need for politics because you're not voting. You're not. You're just what is God's heart? And well, let's seek to fulfill God's purposes. Let's be emissaries of God's heart. Let's be ministering in love because that's how God operates you know, in that way. Now, will, is there an opportunity of good to come out of this situation? Yes. If it causes people to start to come out against violence and start to promote peace, Trump himself, hopefully, we've already heard that he's going to change his speech tonight um, and look at bringing America together rather than dividing America. Yeah, Biden came out yesterday, obviously, you know, again, saying, hey, this is not who we are. We need to come together. So maybe God will bring something out of it. Will be more of a peaceful solution to things than has been such up till now, which has been very divisive. And the politics has been very divisive because that's the nature of politics. You've got one party against another, whereas God's desire is that we would operate in family and in not in competition with one another or conflict with each other, but together in covenant with one another for the blessing of everyone now looking you forward don't think to you know you might just i'm starting to interrupt but so basically what they're saying is god has this divine divine plan that's unfolding let's say she let's say she's using trump hmm. but it's, it's going forward and this is what it this is what is going to happen right okay. it's already been set in stone well, I don't believe anything is setting stone because it's to do with our 
choices that we make. And now we know certain things, let's say, let's say God does give us insight into something that might happen or could happen. Now, how many people who heard that prophecy actually came against that word in that it wouldn't happen? Or how many came into agreement with it? Great, this is God's will. He's going to be shot at, but it's going to cause him to get elected. I mean, you you got two ways of looking at it. And but if the it people was God's divine plan, did it matter if they were in agreement or not in agreement? That's I, I'm not yeah, clear. On I think part. it does matter because okay. I think God gives warnings at times so that we can avoid what is going to happen if we make certain choices. And if people had rallied around that situation and and had come to God seeking for that God's protection would be over that, that it wouldn't happen, that it would be discovered, that any plot that was there would come to light rather than, OK, great, this is going to happen. He's going to be saved, but also he's going to get a minor injury. And they're they're actually in agreement with that happening, believing it's God's will that someone would shoot at him and he would get injured. That is not the truth. God is not like that. God does not want anyone to suffer harm in any way, form or shape. So I don't believe if that was from God, and I'm not saying it is or isn't, if it was from God, then it was a warning to say, you can do something about this. Rather than, OK, this is going to happen and then we're going to see this, this and this, because I don't believe we're going to see the things that that prophecy foretells you know because it's all about oh yeah yeah god's eyes on america america's all going to be great again and we're going to yeah. go back to the founding fathers the founding fathers were mostly masons so it's like do you want to go back to a freemasonry running the world or running the us no I, you know i don't think that's a good idea um so you know where what is it well that people are looking for you know the whole country was based on violence People taking the West, getting rid of the Native Americans, all of this stuff. You know, that's the history. Is that a good history? Same with the British history. It's it's we oh, yeah, but the, the world, the entire world history is violence. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I, don't, I think they're no different than than they were in anywhere else in the world. Yeah. And, and in Africa, that, South America, history. everywhere. Yeah. Is that God's way of doing things? No, he's no. a God of peace. Yeah. So we can't say that the history of any nation was how God intended it to be. Great Britain conquered most of the world at one stage. Is that what God wanted for us? Absolutely not. And for us to call ourselves Great Britain is pride and arrogance. And to make America great again is pride and arrogance. Because it was never great in the first place. Neither was Britain great in the first place because we were all doing things contradictory to peace and God's kingdom. We were doing it the worldly way. We were doing it following a method of we're going to take over the world. We're going to plant our flag. We're going to control this, you know. And yes, most of it has gone away from war. But now it's operating on economy, operating on other things, doing the same thing. We're going to control the world economic stuff. Um, we're going to do it this way now rather than violence, but there's still violence. So you still have the wars and everything else. So I don't personally believe that God's that is God's intention ever. When Jesus said, love one another and forgive one another. That doesn't give any excuse for violence. So if we are operating violently in any way, it's contradictory to God's kingdom, which is not a kingdom of violence. And I know people will quote, ah, yeah, but the violent take the kingdom by force. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's what God wanted. If we try and do things in our own way. Now, if it's the passionate and the intensely committed that establish God's kingdom, yeah, absolutely. And you got to look at well, what was the original words that were used and what were they referring to? Were they referring to the overthrow of the old and the establishing of the new? Probably when you look at covenantally, the old covenant was coming to the end. And because they didn't follow Jesus, there was a judgment of the old covenant system. And that came to an end violently. But Jesus warned them that they could escape the violence but they perpetuated the violence by trying to overthrow Rome politically and 
military wise, which is why they came, Rome came to attack Israel and Jerusalem because of they were rebelling against Roman rule, which is a political spirit in operation, backed up with the religious spirit that was behind it all as well. So, you know, that's history. And I don't believe God ever intends us to use violence to fulfill his kingdom. Mike, just so I, I understand, because I haven't really followed the prophetic very much, uh, especially in the last eight or nine years. But the mechanism is God is speak. If 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 God spoke to that person, he may or may not have. But say if God did, there was a purpose for that, Shalom or whatever. But then he continues on. And then, blah, you know, the next thing's because of this, this, and then that. Mm. Is that... <clears throat> part of like god's if god gave that to him god would have done that or is that also then he could have gone into his own mindsets and he could tie them into because i also looked up some other stuff on him and he was talking about the rapture and stuff like that and i'm thinking okay okay yeah you know I mean? and there's a mindset we have yeah it is a mindset based on our belief of what is going to happen in the future yeah. that can definitely taint the way you bring prophecy what about the pastor a couple of years ago who came out with the whole thing about civil war in america and china and russia being on america's soil you know all based again on well jesus is going to come and rescue us but well, the chinese are there's thirty eight thousand that have gone across the border they're military age men but anyway <laughs> so <laughs> look at it it didn't come to pass um yeah and i'm not saying it will one i'm not i'm not even familiar with the prophecy but anyway yeah. these aren't consistent are they if yeah. God said one thing and says something totally opposite, and I could probably go out there and trawl profit land and find something totally opposite to that. Yes. Because yeah, I've heard prophecies, hey, judgment is coming on America big time and it's going to be this, that and the other because of its stance on abortion and all this stuff. And you had stuff in the Lancaster um, conference a number of years ago with Sundar Severad Singh or whatever he was called and he prophesied this judgment coming and you know then you've got you know California is going to fall to the sea into the sea of earthquake and it's like well it's so much. you know it, all these things I believe are coming out of people's own thoughts understanding whatever and if God is saying something then they're not interpreting what he's saying correctly in that way now i'm not saying whether this is a correct prophecy or not and you know just because something was accurate in one way doesn't necessarily mean that the whole thing because it says we prophesy in part and often that is the case god says something and warns us usually so it doesn't happen generally well, yeah, part of prophecy as i read is also isn't it supposed to be edifying to build you up yeah it is. So, course, if, I, if I listen to that, like my son was like, is like, oh gosh, you know, my job. And I'm working. The prophecy wasn't one that if I was listening to it and I was a like, young parent, you know, making that to me on survival mode, I'd be going, uh oh, what am I going to do? You know, my yeah. wife said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah I understand. And um, yeah, it says New Testament prophecy is about consolation, comfort, and edification. And does that comfort, and edify does it console um you we're can all, we're all going to be screwed for a while <laughs> yeah. yeah it depends really on what your mindset and, and view is because you can read into anything anything oh yeah god's confidence because he's saying this is not going to be the end and it's going to bring good but it's going to be really dark like dark like we've yeah. never seen on the earth but in a sense i'm not disagreeing with that reality from one perspective in the i do believe that what we have created in our systems are not going to last the test of time and they will eventually crumble and fall and if they do there may be a period where things are not operating in the comfort and ease that we've been used to in the west so if that happens um does that mean that god wants chaos and anarchy and everything else no but we have to transition out of something old into something new at some point. And the old never want to let go of their power control positions. So usually something shakes it and it eventually falls and crumbles. And every empire 
that has come out of that empire spirit following a Luciferian agenda for one world government, all of that empire spirit, eventually all the empires crumble. You know, you go back to the very earliest empires and you've got Babel and their desire to establish a name for themselves. And you follow all the way through history and you can see there were different peoples that rose up, the Sumerians, and then no, you have the Assyrians and you've got the Babylonians and the, all of these people, Chaldeans. They all had, but they were generally fairly contained in the Middle East area. Yeah, we're not talking about worldwide, but as it got bigger and transport and things got easier, then things started to expand. And you had like Genghis Khan had a huge empire. All out of war and he killed, you know, millions of people, you know, and all of that stuff on the basis of creating an empire in his name. You know, and the same for other empires going forward right throughout history. None of them were peaceful. And none of them were about God's glory. They were all about establishing a name for ourselves, the British Empire, establishing a name for themselves. There was nothing about God in there whatsoever. Now, did God use it to bring some message of Jesus out? Yes. But actually, was that message tainted with a whole lot of other stuff? Yes. You know, so we expect bought it all sorts of Victorian values that some people are still living under thinking it's God's kingdom, you know, and you know, that's not really the, 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 the message. So I do believe that the systems that we've developed will be shaken and they will come to nothing and people will come to a realization that they're not the answer. And I think that does include the religious, the financial, the political, all of those. And, and I think there's been a deconstruction going on um, amongst believers around the whole understanding of politics, finance and religion to actually renew our minds to the truth of what God is really saying. Jesus warned of the leaven of Herod and Pharisees. Jesus didn't come to establish a political kingdom. He, he very clearly said, my kingdom is not of this world. And I'm not coming to give the kingdom back to Israel so Israel can rule the world. Now, you know, that's what actually is an agenda behind a lot of things, that there will be a kingdom that rules the world. But actually, God's kingdom is a kingdom which spreads not by violence, but through peaceful infiltration as people's lives are changed, like leaven leavens the lump. And yeah, there's a bit of kneading that goes on to get leaven to leaven the whole lump. And you've got to sort of, but it's not violence. You're not committing violence against the dough. You're, you're looking to knead it in such a way that it actually rises. And, you know, in the end. So we sort of have a sort of taken that, what Jesus said about how the kingdom would advance and fill the earth. And we've turned it into all sorts of different ideas. So I do believe we should be ready for the future as things change and we should be the agents of change that are ready to show the right way to the world who are looking for answers that are going to be found in the kingdom which is operating in love, which is not operating in competition and conflict with one another, but our family are looking to operate together in that way. So we'll god warn us of some of those things i believe he will to be ready jesus warned the generation after he left of what to look for in that generation and he warned them of very specific signs to look for to get out of jerusalem and escape what was coming so they were looking for those things you know and some of those things were like oh this doesn't sound very pleasant wars rumors of wars famine you know, all these sort of oh, earthquakes. This isn't, this isn't very, this is a bit dark and gloomy and miserable. But they were signs, not that God was bringing those things on the earth, but he was saying, look, these things are going to take place. I'm warning you to look for these signs and then getting ready for the sign when you see armies coming to surround Jerusalem, get out. And history has it that every Christian left Jerusalem. None of them were trapped in Jerusalem. And the siege of Jerusalem, which lasted four years, you know, 
actually no Christians were were killed in that siege. You know, and so Jesus warned them. So if they let's say let's for hypothetically say there's going to be a financial collapse and the financial system as we know it, which is basically based in greed and usury and making money out of people's misery and loss and everything else, you know, betting on the fall of this and all of this stuff, you know, the whole financial system basically is an electronic system that's backed up by nothing. You know, you know, what are stocks and shares? The value of something that goes up and down based on what? People betting on whether it's going to go up and down, you know, and I don't think that is what God intends us to be living like, relying on that sort of system. So we all operate in that system right now, unless you are off grid and you've got no financial investments in banks or any other form of investment, which is all electronic. Um, if the electronic system were to collapse and what was obviously behind all that is nothing and all of that sort of collapses and it, it sort of established and God warns us, well, here are some signs to look for. And when you start to see this, what are you going to do? Well, we've got to be ready for that. You know, I don't want anything that I've saved or invested um, to be lost so I can't access it. And therefore we'd all be struggling to, to live because we've got nothing. So what would we do with it would be the question. You know, investing in cryptocurrency isn't the answer because cryptocurrency is no different than any other system based on nothing. And actually, if we can't access it electronically, we've got no access to it. You know, and so what are we going to do? You know, sticking it in PayPal isn't going to work either. Nothing like that is going to work if you can't access it. So, OK, what do we do? Well, God will show us what to do. We've got to be seeking God for wisdom to know what to do now. In the interim, we could invest in things like gold, which seems to hold its value no matter what happens with the financial system and usually goes up in value when the financial system is wobbly, you know, and you see that historically. And people like John Paul Jackson, I know, advise people to invest in gold. But I don't want, if I was to invest in gold, I don't want my gold stuck in some bank somewhere that I can't access anymore. So what are we going to do? We have to actually have tangible gold. You know, we'd have to have a block of gold. Well, that's not going to help us either if we go down to the supermarket and say, oh, oh, the card doesn't work. Oh, will you take a bit of gold? And they'll be like, well, how are we going to do that? In the interim, it's going to be difficult. But it may well give you some, well, I've got hard assets on which I can base what I'm doing. Also, I would suggest putting it in land. Because if we're going to establish heaven on earth, where are we going to do it? If we're going to create places, cities for people to live, where are we going to create them? If we don't own the land, then we're going to run into difficulty. So maybe land is something we should be looking at, investing in, putting our assets in so that then we can use those assets. Hey, to, yes, grow crops and food and provide and all the other things. So what land? Well, the land that God will tell us, you know, and hopefully a land that would have water and would be able to produce for a people. But if you had a million people all living on a piece on this land, well, we're going to have to have some sort of supernatural multiplication as well in terms of creative ways of doing things, not just oh, oh what we're going to do. You know, so. Ultimately, we're going to have to look at how the kingdom in heaven operates so that that can be manifest on earth and see things change. So if we're going to have restoration cities and places where God is bringing people, they're going to be protected. They're not going to be subject to the fall of various governmental or world systems or everything else. Then what happens then? Now, I'm not saying this is a futurist thing. Oh, no, the world is all going to go to pot and Jesus is going to rescue us. I'm saying this is the change in who is actually bringing God's kingdom onto earth and establishing a place of health and security and safety and provision and blessing. Because where's where are people going to want to live when there's a plague or something? You know, because that was one of the warnings, wasn't it? Plagues, you know, and famines. Well, if that happens because of our treatment of the planet, perhaps, 
to which we as sons need to start cultivating and tending the planet in a different way, looking differently about these things, then I don't believe God wants revolution and I don't believe God ever wants anarchy, but I do believe there's transition. And ultimately, I think we should be ready for whatever happens in the future in a positive way. And it can be quite, oh, you're talking about living off grid, whatever. Well, I don't want to be subject to the grid, so we need a new form of energy. If we're going to manifest a city that's going to be operating under heaven, we're going to have heavenly energy. So that will be zero point energy or energy, which is gravitational energy or other forms of energy which are out there being uh, discovered um, right now. Often then, you know, the present energy system, you know, doesn't want any free forms of energy. Coal fusion, you know, they've discovered the possibility of coal fusion, but the way they've discovered it is only going to run you know, a very small thing to, to run a huge city. You're going to have to have a different form. Well, all of that, I believe God can give us wisdom, insight, discoveries, inventions to be able to live not subject to the conditions of the world. So it might appear that the world is quite dark, that things are not working anymore. But is that a bad thing? It's not a sign of God punishing people or judging people to these negative things but it is a sign that these things are not the way god has chosen for things to operate and if those things are going to fail then people are going to be responsible for their failure and i think ultimately the political system whichever system you follow is a man-made system whether it's democracy republic communism any other form of governmental system it isn't working and i think you can probably see it's not working from the voting patterns around the world because people are no longer voting for one or two part they're starting to spread their votes and you're finding more coalitions taking place because people are saying hey i'm not supporting this one way of doing it anymore i want I want a more green influence or I want this influence or I want that influence, you know? And I think ultimately people have the power in a political system, if they exercise that power correctly to say, here's what we want. Now, I don't believe that any political system is going to work. So I think what people are saying is we don't really trust this system anymore. We have certain things that we would value, but actually you know, what happens, what would happen in November in the US if no one voted? If someone says, ah, I'm not, I'm not, I've had been done with all this nonsense. We refuse to vote. And the whole country refuses to vote. You know, well, the whole system would collapse because they don't have a government of the people for the people, do they? If the people haven't voted for them. So how would that work? It's not going to happen right now because people aren't going aren't that disillusioned with it yet but they're becoming disillusioned with it you know the last 20 30 years since the 80s in reagan have basically created a, a di divided governments that are all out for their parties rather than the nation i believe and i think that has been evident in many other countries as well and it hasn't been for the people it's been for the political system that we are wanting to perpetuate and i don't think that's what god intends but the other problem is so that and i think people are becoming more aware that what they're fed uh through the through say the media or whatever else is that basically what they want us to believe or know and isn't necessarily we don't really know what's going on we don't even know the truth we don't even know really what a leader's like. It's only how they might portray him, the image they create. Because they have the consultants and everything else. Yeah. I know I'll, even dealing with the lobbyists and with the governments for the last 10 or 12 years, I've become so cynical uh, because they don't care. Mm. They're just, their only thing they want to do is get reelected mm. and keep yep. power. Yeah, and, I know. And, uh, what they say is not true. What they say is they just... You test the different uh, polling and say, okay, this is what people are after. So this is how we, we massage it. So people are for it, but it isn't what they really mean. And, and they have no intention of. 
No. And that's no, the problem. People don't no, know. No, that's where people yes. are getting disillusioned. Yeah, I just don't feel that any of the political systems we had, left, right, middle, far right, far left, any of them, they're yeah. all bases. I've said before, they're all the wings of the one bird that's come out of the same tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They're all man's man's best attempts. And man does not solve the problems of the world very easily itself. So we need external help, God's wisdom, insight to establish God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So we've got to see change, you know, let's get ready for the change. Let's be seeking all, God change. And all the good intentioned social programs they put in don't work over time. They all become corrupted. Well, yeah. My mess. Because let's face it, people are the people who are causing the problem. You know, if it wasn't for people, everything would be wonderful. Planet would be great for one people on it, you know, but there are. And therefore, we have to work within the constraints. I mean, communism, you know, when you look at it, hey, great, everyone's equal, and everyone's blessed. But when it comes to it, well, there are more, some who are more equal than others. I mean, if you look at George Orwell's Animal Farm parody <laughs> of communism, <laughs> the pigs took over the farm. You know, Napoleon yeah. and the other pigs took over the farm. Well, what happened to the rest of the animals? Well, they were now treated as lesser by the greater pigs who now ruled. And the end of the day, because actually it's a corrupt system because people are operating at a lost identity. People do not know their identity as sons of God. So they're operating out of an identity which is perpetuating from their own stuff coming from their own hearts. You know, but there's an agenda also behind it all, which is an anti-Christ agenda, which is anti-God's kingdom and wants to establish a different kingdom under a different government, which is hidden behind a, a Luciferian agenda, which is, hey, I'll be God. Worship me. You can worship me through the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the Labour Party, the Conservative Party or any other party you like, but worship me. You know, I'm behind all these things, but I'm not going to let you know that. You think it's all you, but I'm influencing you to come out of your most baser instinct for power and control and name. Just as you had in right back in Babel, let's make a name for ourselves. You know, lest we be spread abroad and we lose our identity. This is our identity. We're not we're not coming under God as God's children. We're the people who are ruling the earth, you know, and essentially that's what's happened. You know, it's continuing to be perpetuated in lots of different ways. You know, some say, oh, now now's the new hope. You know, we've got a new hope, we've got a new way of doing it, you know. And ultimately, why did these things spring up? Because the previous ones people were disillusioned with. You know, why did we have revolution in Russia? Well, because everyone was treated like slaves. You know, I've been to Russia. I've been to St. Petersburg and the area. I mean, it is opulent. The palaces of Catherine, St. Peterhof Palace, you know, all of these. I mean, they are built on this misery of the serfs. You know, and no wonder they rebelled against that. You know, because they were effectively slaves. Now, the system that came in under an eye you know an ideology which was sort of anti-bourgeoisie and the ruling class and we don't want a ruling class well what happens now you've got putin <laughs> and all of that and you've had all the way through how many people got murdered and killed on the basis of well you know we want to purify the nation from all of these inferiority you had the same in germany and the far right and national socialism and, you know, anarchy in that way, operating, you know, through fascism. You know, there's no solution other than God's kingdom. Now, we need to see God's kingdom established. So how does that work? Well, it gets established in me first. And therefore, I would love my enemies. Because I'm, they're not my enemies. For me, I'm not I'm not their enemy, but they may be perceptively against me or against God or against other things. But what what is the way we should see that change through love? 
You know, so we forgive those who treat us badly. We don't come in the same spirit, coming back at them, trying to get our own back and get revenge and all of that. No, we love and we let love change people's hearts and people's hearts change will eventually change the world. Because yeah. it's people. You know, everything we see is all people. They may be manipulated behind the scenes from various things, but ultimately God wants to influence us for good to help us establish good and operate in love so that people can see, well, this is what God is like. He's a good God and he wants us to experience his goodness and everything else. You know, so I do believe that the world may look different in the future and we might not have this sort of ongoing political system one way or another and that people will awaken to the reality that there aren't the answers and if they awaken to that reality and they begin to look for the true answers which are in god then things eventually will change but it will take time for those transitionary changes to take place but there may well be along the way some things which turn people to look in a different direction and that could be not that God is coming to do those things, but they they fulfill them themselves. You know, if you're operating in an anti-Christ system, it is going to fail. And it's not going to work forever. Therefore, at some point, it in, it, people are going to realize it's not working and they're going to leave it. Hence, a whole lot of people are realizing that religious systems don't work. And they're leaving the religious systems. How many Christians are leaving church? Loads of people are leaving church because they're so disillusioned with the promises that aren't fulfilled by following these religious rules. Now, God wants people to, again, come into relationship with him. Find the love and acceptance and affirmation as sons in that relationship and then operate as co-heirs with him in God's kingdom to see that love fill the earth and spread. Um, and I think people are beginning to feel and see that. And that awakening is happening. And as people sort of get more and more disillusioned with the way things are, those things are going to, in a sense, be left behind. You know, I'm, I guess some people are going to fight for them. You know? I mean, at the same time, I don't know if you've given us any a thought a meditation on is artificial intelligence with robotics with artificial intelligence apparently is coming out within the next year to start on assembly lines uh and that's apparently it's going to be such a game changer i don't under i stand it while my kids use it to write their everything now artificial intelligence uh my it's changing my son said the studios for doing the the work for, for the old creative was the red work and all that so they went off all the people in the studios in toronto on that um mm. and that's a that's a that's that's coming at this very same time all this other stuff is coming i'm just wondering it's just like i know oh. from my daddy when yeah. i'm an old person now, yeah know. i mean i mean i we use we use ai stuff in production of videos and all sorts of stuff now in transcribing stuff for the basis of our books we use ai to transcribe teaching series and then we then you know tinker with them and you know, put them in a better format but it can be useful if it's used in the right way obviously it can be really unhelpful when it perpetuates a whole load of false fake news you know deep fake People, I mean, the political system, some people believe everything they see when actually what they're seeing is a deep fake, which isn't true. So it's hard. You have to be much more discerning when these things are there and can be misused. It, they it, can it, be, it, anything can be used for good, but it can also be misused and used for harm. My understanding with AI, it can mind. So if you're on social media or whatever you're Googling or whatever else, it'll have a profile for you and they can hit you based on your interests and everything else. They yeah. said yeah, politically things in the future will be where they're actually not big campaign rallies. It'll be artificial intelligence hitting people individually. On yeah. Their computers. Yes. I, I, it's going to be mining. I think, I think that's true. 
well you, we know that's true if you if you if you're on any sort of social media platform um you see things that they think you are interested in now for me i think that's great i just don't see a whole load of junk that i used to see so i see i see you know my if i if i look at facebook and i look at facebook every few days just to sort of keep keep up to date if anyone sent me a message or anything and i look and i have a quick look on the thing and then i'm like i see woodworking videos you know all that because i'm interested in woodwork you know i see lots of things that i'm interested in because those are the things i stop and look at so they see oh he stopped and looked at this oh we'll give him more of that and all the old religious junk that used to come out i don't see hardly any of that anymore now, the things I do see, I see the Grace Awakening Network. I see a lot of stuff from Don Keithley and people like that because I stop and look at their stuff. And it knows that I'm interested in their stuff. Now, you could say that's a good thing or you could say, oh, well, you're only looking at the things you agree with. Well, yeah. So why, why not? Why would I look at things I don't agree with? Why are you not getting a broad picture of everything? Well, I've already rejected a whole load of stuff that I'm not interested in. You know, the last time the election cycle came round, you know, I unfriended about 500 people because I just didn't want to see their junk. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I don't see no, it. I don't see it. I don't see any of that prophetic stuff anymore. <laughs> because I'm not following the people who put that stuff on their posts. You know? So, you know, it, it can be a good thing in a way. Now, it becomes intrusive when you get adverts for everything, you know, that you've been talking about. You think, oh, something's been listening to my conversations, you know, and it's like then all of a sudden <laughs> up comes this advert for this or that or the other. Now, I don't mind woodworking tool adverts because, you know, some of those things are, oh, this is an interesting new tool or a new way of doing stuff. That's yeah, quite useful. <clears throat> but I don't want to be bombarded with stuff all the time. So there's a sense where, you know, can AI produce something good? Yes, it can. You know, AI looking at medical scans can do it much better than human beings can do it if, if, if it's programmed correctly. And they can spot things that people will miss. Now, that might be a good thing, medically speaking, in, in some things. So there's there's positives and there's always negatives about something. Now, you know, if you go down the route of fearing this, oh, well, it's all going to turn into so much good that they realize that we're the problem on Earth and AI is therefore going to get rid of us, which is the premise behind the Matrix. And it's the premise behind quite a few science fiction scenarios um you know that oh ai has got smart and actually now it realizes that we're the problem we're the virus on the planet so it's all going to turn against us you know and you've got the terminator movies and cyberdyne systems and all of that you know and actually there's a warning there you know that okay hey let's not be a virus on the planet let's respect and honor and look out for the planet and look out for each other and actually not be the problem, but be the solution, then, you know, I look at those things and think, well, yeah, you know, I understand why that could be, you know, a an issue. The AI, if it gets really, really intelligent, you know, independently, can look at the world and think, well, the problem is all these people causing all this trouble on the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, so I understand that, you know, and I understand that, People might fear that. And we need to be careful, of course. You know, and, you know, Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics, you know, had the thing where, you know, AI could not hurt its creators, you know, sort of thing built into it. And you had these sort of things. And, you know, so I'm not blasé enough to just say oh no it's no problem it'll never cause a problem we, we need to be careful about how we use anything but it can definitely be used for you know harm particularly deep faking stuff and producing videos that you know are going to influence what people think and control them into following a particular path 
And I think that is dangerous. But that's why we need to be discerning. You know, Jesus helps us. The Holy Spirit is there to as the truth. The Holy Spirit of truth is there to help us. We have, if we train our senses with the truth, then we can discern what is not true and easier to see the lies if you're discerning. But a lot of people are not discerning because they've never trained their senses because they've never spent enough time with the truth. So they find it really difficult to discern what is true and what isn't true. And therefore, some prophetic word comes out and they find it really hard. Is this God? <clears throat> you know, and it, oh, what is it doing? Is it creating a fear in you? Well, if it is, it's probably hidden God. Yeah, it, is it aligned with some future which you know is chaotic and chaos and whatever? Well, you know, is that what God wants? You know, but it is for a lot of people. A lot of people who are futurist, dispensationists, or rapture teachers will obviously expect the world to end up in Armageddon and Jesus will have to come and rescue us. Yes. That's the scenario that they're looking for. So they're 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 in sense not wanting peace. Because war brings that their agenda to fulfillment. You know, whether it's war in the Middle East, Armageddon, whatever you want to call it. Well, for them, that's going to bring Jesus back. So they're not operating in wanting peace on earth. They actually think war is going to be the end of this and the beginning of something new. Well, you know, I'm just not believing that, that is true. I don't believe that's true. And I don't believe God is going to want the world to be destroying itself you know i believe in the restoration of all things therefore i do believe god will restore all things and all people back to his original purpose where we're in agreement with him in operating in sonship and bringing creation freedom you know because creation is in bondage because we are creation is longing and waiting for the revealing of the sons of god yes. you know? so i think there's nothing wrong in seeking God for wisdom around these issues. So AI, let's not be blasé about it, but let's not be fear-mongering about it. Let's seek God's wisdom and insight into how. Now, ultimately, AI is man's best solution, creating something that can do things better than we can. But it's still man's best solution. It doesn't have a kingdom moral compass. Based in an understanding of God's heart. AI is not going to be directed by the Holy Spirit in that sense, because we have created it. So ultimately it is another thing that we've created, which is not the answer to all our problems. But. I'm not against technology because technology can be helpful and useful. And I think, you know, if Adam had not fallen and had fallen from his position of walking in heaven and on earth and God walking with him, I don't think the whole world will be full of people who are all wandering around naked in a garden. I think there would have still been an ascension and progress and insight and establishing and creating things in the image of god because we're made in his image so we would have been creative so i'm not saying that oh well let's go back to all living in in innocence in a garden yes be innocent but actually that does not mean innocence as in well we've got no in intelligence or no creative ability to see things cr be creative and increase because there was no end to the increase of God's government and peace. And there was to be a increase in the earth, a fruitfulness. Well, what's fruitfulness? Us being like God, as sons of God, at working things as God does things. So I believe if we had not fallen, we would have been able to create things like God created things, which could have been anything. I believe we would have been you know, we'd already have filled, filled the earth to capacity and we'd have been living on other planets and other things, not by now. Because we would have found that God has created the ability to do that. You know, there are wormhole gateways that connect all over the universe and we would have been able to use them had we have not chosen to do things our own way. Now our best solution is to come up with some spaceship. 
which takes years or puts people in suspended animation to get anywhere. Well, you know, that's not the answer. You know, a wormhole technology that can take us from one place to another place instantly is already out there. You know, there are already gateways in the heavens. There are already gateways connecting dimensions and other things. We just are not permitted to use them until we come into a maturity of sonship that we can use them in the way that we would have used them if we hadn't gone our own way. So there's a lot of things there which you know i think we need to be more reflective on what if restoration is going to take place it isn't going to go back to we're all going to be living in a garden yeah it is going to be a restoring to what it would have been if we had not fallen from that position of creative ability so that means the ability to create and not make you know, will we be stripping the earth of its earthly assets, using wood and all that stuff to make things, using metal to make things? No, not as we are now doing. But could we create something by choosing to use our intention to form light into something that we have formed in our own heart and mind in alignment with God's heart? Yeah, absolutely. So if we're going to establish a restoration city, are we going to use bricks and mortar? I very much doubt it. Because if you want to house a million people overnight, you haven't got time to build, um, you know, 100,000 houses or whatever. So we're going to choose to form things out of what? Out of light, out of energy. Because all matter is just energy, you know, formed into something solid for us. It's still vibrating. It's just vibrating in a way that is actually material. So why, where does that take place? Well, we speak with God's voice and we choose to, by intention, form light into a reality that forms something as God did. Light be, there was light. Animals, plants, land, God said, and it was. So I think that is where we're headed into a creative ability not ai artificial intelligence trusting in that but our own wisdom and insight and understanding of outworking the heart of god as co-heirs and co-creators within all creation and i think there is you know a future which is as god intended it to be for us to discover and participate in with him so yeah there's got to be change um we just need to mature enough to activate that change correctly and be discerning enough to reject anything that's coming out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so that we can only establish that which won't be shaken which is god's kingdom i mean hebrews says the only, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And the only thing that remains that can't be shaken is God's kingdom. At working in peace. So anything that's contradictory to peace is not God. And that's why a lot of prophetic things I hear, I just don't re resonate with at all because I just know they're not, they don't carry a frequency of love and peace and joy on them. And therefore, they're not from God. Um, so I don't resonate or come into agreement with them. And I would encourage anyone who's listening to prophetic things, do not assume that it's what God wants just because someone has said it. It may well be God saying, this is what could happen if you don't intervene and bring about an intention which brings a reality which is not that you know you know did god want paul to go and be captured in rome and taken captive well he warned paul by agabus what would happen if he went to jerusalem he would be bound now there was a religious bondage that was there because he went to jerusalem and he circumcised timothy which was not a good idea and so there was something there in religious bondage but also he ended up being carted off to Rome and eventually dying in Rome. 
Now, did God intend him to do that? Or did God want him to continue sharing that message of inclusion all over the earth as he was doing? What would have happened if he had followed the warning and not gone to Jerusalem and didn't get captured? Something might have been different than it is now. We don't know because he did what he did. Now, again, was the prof prophecy, well, this is what's going to happen. So I'm just showing you, you're going to end up in captivity. Or was it like, hey, don't go because you don't want to end up like this. And I think that's what we've got to try and discern. And I would encourage people not to look at the, just on the surface of what's being said, but what is behind it. And really, is what God's saying or showing us something that we then come in agreement with and saying, not on our watch. We're not allowing these things to take place in this way. And if this prophecy three months ago, the whole of the Christian community had come together and said, not on our watch. We're not allowing people to be assassinated on our watch. We're going to, you know, choose a reality in which this gets exposed and people who are doing these things are going to be brought into the light and everything and it didn't happen that might have been a much better way than saying oh this is what god wants because i don't believe god did want that you know and that's why i think discernment is really really important when we are looking because it's supposed to be weighed you know, weighing it is like, well, whose side is, what side is this on? Is this God? Is this not? Where is it coming from? And I think the enemy is just as able to bring prophecy as God is, because it's false prophecy. That's what happened with various things in the Bible when people were falsely prophesying. Where did that come from? Not from God. So words that are from God are not necessarily always from God. They could be from their own person's imagination, but they could also be inspired because that person is aligned with a wrong way of thinking that they're easily deceived into believing a false future of negativity and doom and gloom and rapture and everything else. So people who are deceived theologically are very open to negative words that back up their own belief system and the enemy is quite capable of sowing those words to them that they then bring out but mike i guess a confusing thing i find is that for example god knew christ was going to come and do redeem us before the foundation of the world hmm. and so god knew that we were going to fall now Adam didn't have to fall, but God already knew we were going to we were going to fall. Yeah, and I mean, so that's, that's where I get confused. And so it's like even when I look at this, God yeah. knows the beginning from the end. So therefore, is he going to kind of give this this guy just a little insight sometimes? And I and I know that the prophetic is all over the place. I and I yeah. don't all I find even, when I hear something frustrating now because I'm I'm saying to myself, what are you saying? Just be clear, you know. Yeah, but did, out of gibberish. did God know there's the transcendence and the imminence of God and God dwells with every moment with us and therefore it can be like what we do. God didn't know we were going to do that dwelling with us every moment because he's living in the imminence of our relationship with him. But there's a sense where God is transcendent outside of time and space. But that is always in the now. I don't believe the future exists. Yet. So I don't believe in this continuum. Of, oh, well, it's already happened. Therefore, it's, you know, and I know people say, well, I've been to 2056 and I've seen what it's like. You know, I don't believe they've been to 2056 because I don't believe you can travel in time into the future because it doesn't exist yet because we've not created it yet. But what I believe is God can bring and release his desires for the future. To which then we can come into agreement for the establishing of his desires for the future. But that isn't foreknowledge. That is an expression of his desire 
which we can come into agreement with so it can be established. And I and I know this is sort of a difficult it's a difficult one in terms of as, what, as I recall, C. S. Lewis explained it. I thought, and I could be wrong, where God's up here, there's this like line timeline. And he's seeing the whole timeline because he's outside of it. And what I'm understanding you to say, which I never realized up until now, the future doesn't exist until the future happens. Yeah. Well, that, that for me is how I, that's how God has shown it to me. I know other people have different views of that. And well, God is sovereign and it's all going to work out. Well, that's just for me, it's just like a Muslim theology. Wow. Of, well, if it happens, it must have been God. Well, I don't believe that at all. Most things that happen are because of us. You know, so I, I personally do not believe that the future exists. But the time frame here may be different from the time frame that's operating in the spiritual realms. So there may be, I mean, even if that realm was ahead of this realm or the speed of light was faster there, so time was different there than it is now, there is the possibility that there may be some way of seeing or interpreting what's going on. But uh, the way God's shown me is that the eternal now is now. It's not the future. It's not the past. It's now. That includes everything that has happened because it is history. And you can go back and you can see it and you can engage in it and you could be used in it by going in to the eternal now from our moment, let's say we go into the eternal now in 2024 and we have access to 1856 and God uses us in 1856 when we've accessed the eternal now in 2024, that immediately we were used in it. We didn't change it from the perspective of it happened and we changed it. We were used in it. Yeah. So if I was used in 1856, when I in in 19, in 18 in whenever we are now 2024, I didn't change what happened in 1826 from my history. I was used in that history. So it became history in my involvement in it. And everything I do and everything we choose and every decision we make becomes history as soon as we choose it and make it. Just like you're saying, people, the future could be used in our history now. Yes, they could be, but then, but they're not. We're not there yet, and they're not yet yet. They don't exist yet, but they could be used in our past because they are now entering into the now. But it doesn't mean that it exists yet. And there are lots of paradoxes around the thought of it all, which you know would take you know a lot of you know sort of so intellectual when, understanding. So I try and when, say, when Jesus said to the the Christians. Get out of Jerusalem. Mm. Yeah. He knew something about the future. Well, he knew it hadn't that happened. His intention was that within a generation that this old system would come to an end. Okay. So you could say that that was in alignment with the intention, but it wasn't specifically exactly already in existence and already happened god was showing what was going to happen from his desire and that people had to come into agreement with that desire for it to happen you know and ultimately if those christians had chosen to stay in jerusalem they would have died with everyone else in jerusalem even though god didn't intend them to and god had warned them not to but they listened to when you see these things begin to happen come out so, so it's it is difficult, you know, and foreknowledge being in the eternal now is a complicated subject. And I can't say I understand it totally fully. I just don't think the future is exists in a way which means it's fixed and rigid and doesn't have our involvement in it. You know, and you could say, well, God knows what you're going to do. So he's only basically saying what this future is going to be based on what he knows you're going to do. You know, and you could say, well, OK. 
but that means so, we're already going to do it and it's we've got no choice it's going to happen because we're going to choose that regardless without god's being able to help us make a better choice so does that mean just for example bruce grandchildren right now it is it's, it's not already known who they'll marry, the number of children they'll have, the number of who they will marry, the number of children they'll and that kind of stuff is not isn't set. No, I don't think it's set. No, because if it was set, there would be no choice. Any of us, we'd just be living in fate. It is all agreed. But, but even if it wasn't okay, so it, even but even though I, I hear what you're saying, but God is so He's outside of time, and He knows the choices they're going to be making down the road because He knows every He's all, he knows everything, I guess. I don't I, Well, but God has chosen to limit himself within what he has created. This is good for me because I didn't understand it. I never, I thought it was kind of already, God already knew it all anyway. Well. And I just kind of trying to get in, I'm trying to get into alignment with his plan. <laughs> See, God could be, you could say God is omniscient within the restrictions he's operated in. That what he's chosen to operate in, but not beyond that. I mean, it is what God has chosen to operate in, and he's chosen to operate within the context of us. So he doesn't manipulate us and control us into what we do. But he knows what we're going to do in it before we do it. Or not. Not in not in the imminence of living with us. Okay, in the so that's huge moment. for me. I didn't did you know that? I didn't know that. I thought he just already knew everything. Oh, transcendence, transcendence and imminence. There's a sense where God is in the eternal now, but I don't believe the eternal now contains a fixed future. But he's living with us in every moment. But within that, God is capable of taking everything that we do and bringing good out of it. But he knows, Mike, the day that someone's going to die when they're born no oh i because, thought your days are not like he, he's numbered your well, days because, well well so let's say someone has had because this is what some people believe about they have a scroll of their life and on that yes. scroll there's a date like, well that god, i changed god, my scroll i've heard people tell me that yeah does god not want us to be immortal yes so therefore we're not going to die but he knows that we're not, he, that person might not be immortal. I've heard people say they've added gears to their lives. They changed the scroll. Yeah, I know. So therefore, well, God didn't know then. Because it changed. So, so it wasn't fixed. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> it wasn't fixed. So it, there's a sense where God's at work with us in this. We're well, that's where I come back to. I don't understand or know anything. <laughs> well, no, I don't know anything either. You know, and and in a sense, these are questions to ponder, and to engage with God, and to engage with time as a being to begin to begin to understand how we can work in cooperation with God as co heirs and co creators to establish and outwork God's heart. See, I believe that Jesus only did what He saw the Father doing. But did the father show him, you've got to heal this person this way, this way, this way, this way? I don't believe that's how it worked. I believe Jesus knew the father's heart by in relationship and outworked the father's heart through his creative choice, to which God gives us the same creative choice as sons to outwork his heart in, in the flow way the that flow with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, in a way we choose creatively to do it. Therefore, he has made everyone uniquely to make choices to outwork who they are. And therefore, if I did something and you did something, we may do it differently, but get the same result. But it's the result that matters, not how it works. Yes. Because God's heart is someone right. got healed. Jesus spoke to them, they got healed. Jesus laid hands on them, they got healed. Jesus anointed them with spit and they got healed. The point was God's desire was they would be healed. Not yes. that he gave Jesus a absolutely prescriptive way of dealing with it every day. Yes. Because that really is just like, well, Jesus is a robot then. Just doing yes. what he was programmed by God to do. No, because Jesus was involved in choice and creative choice as the model of our sonship. For us to see, we have creative choice to outwork God's heart. 
And God has given us creativity to be able to express. So if we were both to say we're going to seek God about designing something for the future, let's say we're going to design somewhere where we're going to live. I guarantee what you design would look very differently what I would design. But they will both be somewhere we could live in the future. Because we are designed in the image of God to be creative, but with choice in how we express that creativity. And God actually rejoices in the diversity of our choices and loves the fact that we are different and celebrates our differences. But that doesn't mean that we can all come to the same ultimate conclusion of outworking God's heart but not in a fixed, rigid, limited, restricted, robotic way. Really, isn't our, it, the message is so simple, I think, in that we're just to live in peace and God's love and under Christ Jesus' lordship. And basically, he'll kind of look after everything in our lives because he'll be giving us the counsel, the lordship, and everything else. We don't have to be planning doing this and planning. You might get that inspiration to do that, but the fact is, it's just that simple. But he'll look after us because he said, talked with the birds. Totally. Yeah. He loves us. That's he what we miss it. It's, it's a very that's trust. It's, it's complex, but it's simple, too. Yeah, it is. If we trust him and he, we trust him to provide for us, protect us and guide us and direct us, then all we have to do is keep walking with him every day in that trust. In place. And he'll, he'll let us know. Yeah. And if there's something he wants us to do as part of that, he can show us. You know, rather than, oh, well, God will do it all or we'll do it all. No, we're doing it with him in relationship yeah. rather than independently of him. That's why it's got to be relational and heart to heart relationship of intimacy where we know his heart. And you we know, always know because we have with our own self, are we at peace? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what the intent of what we're doing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Fine. Anyway, Fine. I need to leave it there. Which is actually the case, which is situated in this particular situation, yeah. the prescription to fall. Yeah. Yeah. That's we don't right. have to know. No, I, I think trusting in God, the more we mature, the more God trusts us to outwork his heart. And the more leeway he gives us within that outworking, because he knows that we know his heart. Because we're yeah. aligned with his heart. And therefore, I think he'll trust us more and more. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.